Well, hello creatives and welcome back to the design studio. I can't wait for us to put this, di di this design together. I had done one of these way back in like 2018, 2019. So I'm super excited to put a whole new spin on this design. So if you're a first time joiner and this is your first time finding me, well, first of all, welcome. I'd love to know where you're joining us from. And um, if you can do me a favor and put that in the comments below. Also, if you'd like to save a copy of this video, if you're on Facebook, just simply click the share button. It'll share it on your Facebook page where it's so much easier to find. And if you're on YouTube, super simple. You can actually just click um, save and then go ahead and put this in whatever file folder you happen to have created on YouTube. And you'll have a copy of this tutorial whenever you're ready. So I'm going to pivot you down and then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we get our comments pulled up and then I'll go over all the materials and we'll get started. So hang tight. We're going to take a little ride right down to the tabletop and you should be able to see everything. Obviously we're working with a black, white and red design. So let me go ahead and make sure I can see comments and I will go ahead and pin to the bottom of the page. Um, so that you guys have all the information handy. Let me do this really quick. This is like my one wish that Facebook would implement is a way for us to actually do this, like put it in uh, the system so that when you go live, it's already there. But unfortunately it doesn't. Hi Pam, welcome. Okay. Hi, Joanne. Welcome. All right. So what we're doing is we're going to be doing a farm fresh milk, which is a cow themed inspired design. So here is our sign. This is our inspiration point. So obviously it's going to be black, white, and red. Um, this sign you can pick up from craft outlet. So um, this is a 12 inch. It's like 11.7, some weird thing, but they rounded up to 12 inches. So we're going to be using that as well as the basket weave black and white mesh. So we're going to use this as our base method. On top of that, we're going to be adding some ribbons, which are our cowhide print. This is a first for me this year. So this is from Craft Outlet. We're doing a red and white Swiss dot. This is from Craft Outlet this red and white farmhouse ticking again craft outlet um, we're going to pair that with a red and white edged gingham with a big wide red stripe this is from kringle designs um, we're going to feature some farmhouse words craft outlet and then we're going to add a solid black inch and a half which is from kringle designs um, then we're going to embellish it with some fun things that I'm going to save to the very end because, um, I don't want you to see it yet. It's like such a cool surprise. So we're going to finish wiring a 14 inch Dollar Tree frame. This one happens to be silver. So Dollar Tree, as far as I know, has green, gold, and silver. We're using silver as our inspiration point. And I've already done the first five sections. We're going to do the sixth one together. We're going to take our pipe cleaner and we're going to wire together the two um, middle rings closest to the center of this. And what that does is it gives your pipe cleaner some stability. And then using this and our weld, we're going to look for a midway point on the outside too. Just like this. And then we're going to do the same on the opposite side with our white on the outside too. This gives you a grand total of six on the inside and then 12 to the outside. Total total is 18. We're going to be removing the inside six because our sign is so large. Um, we're not going to have any purpose with those. It's so much easier to do it while you're building your design rather than putting everything together and then going back in and cleaning everything up and trying to figure things out. So hi, Amy. Hi, Renee. Um, let's see. And it just started raining. Hi, 
Elizabeth, welcome. Hi, Loretta and Cheryl. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So as you guys are coming in, say hi. I'd love to know where you're from. We're using this basket weave mesh. So I've used it on one other design. It was actually supposed to be for this design, but because I didn't have the sign, it was like, well, I already cut the mesh. I already did the ribbon. So let's go ahead and just use that on that design. So we rechanged everything. So I'm taking the finished edge and I'm placing the finished edge to the inside. Okay. Just like this. You want to make sure that you've got a pretty good, you know, 50, 50 blend halfway in halfway to the bottom. Since this is our inside, I'm going to go ahead and remove these as I come across these. And this particular type of deco mesh, I was able to use the wood burning tool on, which will give us a really nice finish. So I'm going to do the, the method called the next one, which just means, hey, whatever pipe cleaner we come to next, that is the one we're going to be adding our deco mesh to. So we're doing the ruffle method, which is scrunching or gathering our mesh against the natural way that it was on the roll so that it'll lay flat. So just gathering this in about a half inch to an inch increment, laying that right inside our pipe cleaner. This is really great quality mesh and believe it or not, even with the, the, the design on this one, we're gonna have amazing coverage. So just like that, once I'm done with my pipe cleaner, I'm just going to move it to the left that way, when I go to lay my next piece of mesh down on top, it doesn't go right through it, like poke through. So you just picture an imaginary line right up the center and just keep pulling it towards you, just like so. And then I'm going to open this side up so that I can lay that one right on the inside. And now we've moved into the left hand side of the pipe cleaner in the next section. So again, taking, moving your pipe cleaner to the left. I like to take the edges and just kind of fold them so that it doesn't catch. I'm super excited to see how this is gonna turn out. I've wanted to do one of these for such a long time and I was like, it just never seemed like I had all the things that I would want to use available to me. Like the cow print ribbon would be out of stock and I couldn't find it. And, uh, or the sign was out of stock and they, you know, couldn't get it back in. So finally I have everything all together for this. We're going to go ahead and make sure as we clip, our pipe cleaners, we're gonna push the leftover piece down to the center. And then I've gotta pull the one that we already put in out of the way so that we can lay that down on top of it. So the center covers that gap between the two outside pieces. These pieces are all cut to 20 inches. It only requires one roll of deco mesh. So that's why I use the ruffle technique a lot is because I'm not wasting an extra roll of deco mesh, you know, to put a design together. So I'm going to move that one out of the way. You can see all the pipe cleaners just kind of get in the way. Okay. So moving that over, we're connecting the two move our pipe cleaner to the left, and then I'm ready for this one. So sometimes because we don't have a pipe cleaner here in the center section, what I'll do is on this particular, um, I call it the right side of each section, I will overlap like this, take the one preceding it, overlap so that now this piece is gonna lay slightly on this piece and provide the coverage that we need to make sure that our frame is concealed. Although I like the little 
you know, silver on this. I'm okay if it was to show, but um, not everybody might like that. But this is going to cover extraordinarily well. So again, folding our edges to the side, moving the pipe cleaner out of the way, and now we're going to get ready to put in our center one. Okay, I'm just reading your guys' comment. Why did my screen go dark? It's being weird. Oh, hi, Nancy. She says, I was finally catching a live Facebook took notifications off every single time Facebook does an upgrade on their site. It automatically defaults everybody back to factory settings, which means that if you had notifications turned on, they're going to turn them off. So the simple thing to do to turn them back on, and they've even made turning them back on challenging. So not only do you want to be liking the page, you want to be, or not only following the page, you want to like the page as well. The like button is hidden. It is right next to the follow button. Or it's the other way around, I can't remember. Um, open up the three little dots to the right and then you should have an option to turn on live notifications. And you'll have to do that with every single person that you're following um, that you wanna be notified when they go live. And of course you have to be on your device to get notified. So what are you guys already thinking about this design? So far, based on what you've seen. I love this mesh because it's going to go in real nice and provide great coverage, but it also provides really good stability. So it's really thick, which means whatever I decide to put in here, now we're getting ready to make that transition. So I want to make sure I have a piece above and a piece below which is from the piece preceding that. Oops. That one just was like a little too big. Okay. Moving this. We're gonna add this one right down to the center. Open this up and Sometimes you just got to reorganize everything because what I want is a smooth transition between each of the pieces so that as we're adding our ribbon tails to the outside, you can see the next section and then I don't have to manipulate the mesh in order to showcase all the ribbons. And you could do this on a work frame as well. I think this mesh would do really well, uh, providing a really good coverage to an elevated work frame that has that two inch margin. You have to kind of figure out how are you going to hide that and placing our centerpiece back under the preceding one. And then I'm just going to take these and kind of move them all the way. Get it? Move them off to the side. And I prefer to have the mesh come to me instead of having me walk my fingers up the mesh. But whatever your preference is for um, scrunching or ruffling your mesh, is entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong. Okay, here we go. Making that transition between one and the other. Setting it up. I guess I'm pretty methodical in how I build my wreath bases because um, I've seen some people just kind of 
gather their mesh and just lay it in there, you know, and speed through the process. But I'm like, I don't know, I kind of like a more precise look. Even though it might be completely covered up by everything else, um, I still would like to know. I have good coverage everywhere. Here's our inside. So we're just going to kind of scooch that in. Give it a couple twists. And then where I have open, you know, I'm going to trim that. And then tuck that little end piece to the inside. And then take the piece before it and lay that just over the top. Hi, May from Canada. Nancy says, I like it. I need to make a cow wreath for a friend, daughter-in-law's birthday in June. Ooh, so this is a really good tutorial for you. Um, so I saw Anna. She said, just got here. Where's the mesh from? Craft outlet. Um, and the label on the mesh, I call it basket weave because that's what it was way back when they first came out with it. Um, but it doesn't list that way. You'll just like search for a black and white deco mesh and you'll find it. It's kind of like, I call it basket weave because that's what it looks like. A basket weaved pattern. Okay. So it's very open. When you look at it down on my cutting mat, you can see how sheer, like how open it is. Like the rows and the columns are not very tight. Oops. Okay, we are going. And of course, now all these are flopping back on top. We have three more pieces after this. Nice and tight. And then as we unruffle, move our pipe cleaners to the side. And the only reason I move them to the side is so they don't go through the piece that I'm going to lay on top. So I think this was my tightest piece. So I like using those for the center. They'll lay flat anyway because you're going against the curl. Right on top. And this is our last center. So we're removing the center six because we have a really large sign that is going on here. Tucking that back inside, laying the preceding one back on top. There we go. I would caution you if you're using this mesh to, if you have a really nice sweater, go change your sweater before you use it because the edges um, will catch on everything. Last, no, I have one more piece, I didn't see it. It's tucked behind my pole on my table. So, moving those out of the way. The last piece is always the most challenging and it doesn't matter where you start because you're dealing with all the pieces before and all the pieces that are following. Okay, got this skinny little section to get this one in. And then I'm gonna move these pipe cleaners off so they don't get in the way. And then we can go ahead and start our ribbons. So I wasn't really sure if I wanted to introduce the twine um, or if we want to use raffia, we could go either or, I have both. Okay, here's the last piece. We need to adjust it to match the one before. 
and also the one right in here because we have that center section. So look how gorgeous that is. That is a complete coverage with that mesh, even though it's very sheer and very open. We have a 24 inch base right now. So these are going to be the ribbon that we use, which is going to be the cow print inch and a half craft outlet with the farm words, the farmhouse farm words. We're going to put those together. The two and a half is cut to 14 inches, the inch and a half to 19. Again, both from craft outlet. And then we have the red with the red and white gingham strip, two and a half inch cut to 14 inch pieces from crinkle and then the red and white farmhouse ticking, which is from a uh, craft outlet. So we're going to pair those. Those are our pairings for this. We're keeping red with red and black with black. So I just fold the ribbon in half to find the exact midway point. Then on the inch and a half, we're going to put our dovetailed edges together. We're going to go up about two inches from the top, literally, I kid you not, two inches. And then we're going to place that right on top. It's called a half bow or an awareness ribbon. So I know it doesn't look like an awareness ribbon yet. We're going to leave our pipe cleaners in. Lorena says, printed out your bow recipe and just made it for my Easter wreath. It turned out so good. I'm so glad, right? Recipes are great because if you want it to look just like that, you're going to follow the recipe. Okay, so that is our first one. Let me show you what that looks like up close. That's how it's going in. We're keeping the pipe cleaners for now because we're going to utilize those for something else. And then we're going to do the same thing, the two and a half inch mesh or ribbon, fold it in half, and then right in that midway section, just gather it. Let's see, I'm trying to get my pipe cleaners to not go in between. We're going to go ahead and lay that right on the inside and then just put your fingers underneath, push up and fan them out. We're going to pair that with that cowhide ribbon. Pinching in again. Place that right in the center. Give it a couple twists. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. And I'm going to go all the way around the back with my little tail so that I don't see it in the front. You're going to always right side for me. It's always the left side tail. And then just fan that out. So these are the color combinations that we're going to alternate all the way around the wreath. We're removing the pipe cleaners from the black and white, but not from the red and white combo. And I've already like thrown off my pattern in how I stacked my ribbons. So I'm flipping them over. So I'm like a sous chef. I prepped everything so you didn't have to watch me cut everything. And if you haven't noticed, I've gone back so far about the last 50 videos that I've made and I've put in what's called chapters. So if you watched any of my most recent videos, there are um, little page breaks in the video that you can visually see after you get through the first ad. Because people always complain that they're like, I don't like to see all the ads and it's like, well, but that is how we make just a little bit of money on the YouTube side of things is running ads. I mean, YouTube makes more of it, but that's also the reason why YouTube does not charge the people to post their videos is you deal with the ads. They don't bother me anymore. I just wait for them to come on and just skip through them. 
So, like I said, once you get past the first one, it goes to playing the actual tutorial. And then if you notice on the video, there are little breaks in the video. And I kind of put those specifically like, you know, adding deco mesh, um, adding the ribbons, making the bow, fluffing the bow. So you could actually just skip to write what you want. Like if you've already got your base down, you don't want to rewatch the whole thing. You can actually run your cursor along the top of that and just click to a specific chapter in the video, like how to make the bow. So it's a little easier for you to find rather than um, fast forwarding through the videos. So I'm in the process of going through and doing that on all of them, but it's going to take me a bit. But the 50 most recent videos and anything going forward will have those in them. I'm making sure I don't cut the red ones. Kit Kat, don't cut the red ones. Don't cut the red ones. That's what I need to tell myself over and over in my head. Don't cut the red. We can twist them and get them ready to be trimmed off once we add our embellishment there. Again, just realign your pipe cleaners and get them all back in the correct position. I love this cow print ribbon. Because you don't have to do it as a cow wreath, you could do this as a chicken wreath. Or you could do it as a pig wreath. Loretta says, I also watched the color theory tutorial. Thank you. What'd you think of that? I absolutely love that tutorial. It helps you as a wreath maker when you start to struggle and you're like, oh, why is this so hard? When you understand colors, you're like, okay, I got it. I know, I know now this was going to be a challenge. So here's some options of what I can do to work around those challenges. And we're going to be doing that on every single video tutorial that we do on a go forward basis as we start to cover all the mesh types and uh, get into uh, deco mesh base, creating deco mesh bases and stuff like that. We'll talk about, okay, why would have this been so challenging? Oh, and I have some super cool surprises coming for you guys. I can't wait to share them. Um, it's going to come in about two weeks. Um, and I think you guys are really going to love those because nobody's done them. I've checked. Nobody has made them. But I already have all the designs for next week pre-planned out. So we'll do it for the following week. I think that's probably going to be second week in February. I think. It depends on which day. So surprises, lots of new designs coming. Every month we're also going to do giveaways of something that we create. We are also going to be doing uh, things called like a wreath on a budget where I really try to go with like the lowest priced materials cost and show you how to create a design for like, hmm, before we were doing it for less than $10, um, we will still try to do that or it might go to like $15. But I'm going to show you how we can put together some incredible designs using stuff that you can find locally sourced. We're almost, we're almost done. I love this rain. We have finally got rid of all the snow. Anna said, is that going to be in your private group? Um, 
So the private group is getting totally new content this year, but no, like the wreath on a budget is for the main group. Because I've had some people that said, you know, we really like the fact that you've gone in and um, shown us how we can use stuff like Dollar Tree wreath frames or Dollar Tree ribbon or Dollar Tree embellishments to create something absolutely adorable. Um, so they were like, can you do that? Because for a lot of our viewers, um, they're retirees. They're making these for gifts. And so they need a lower price point option. So I said, you know what? That is really interesting. And that is something I can build into our schedule every month is to do a wreath on a budget. And we will be doing a giveaway and the giveaway is going to be in the main group. But like in our private group, we're going to be learning how to make wreath embellishments, like fake bags, like actual embellishment embellishments that they can sell for other wreath makers. Just trying to teach them how to pivot their business so it's not just one thing. There are a lot of people who have multiple things going on that they make. And so we're teaching to that this year, um, the ability to be able to pivot your business and to offer more than uh, just a handful or like one thing. Because we have people who crochet, people who knit, people who make candles, people who make... Uh, natural soap, people who make jewelry, and so people who make aprons. So we're looking at, okay, so how would you incorporate this into your existing business? Super simple. Sometimes you just kind of have to go in a totally different direction. But I really want private group members to have a very extensive resume to where if they could look at anything, a picture uh, that a client might send them, I want them to know how to make that or to get somewhat close. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to be looking at photos and we're going to attempt to recreate them as best as we can. This one up a little bit more. Felt like it wasn't quite two inches. So I'm always interested to know what you guys like, what you guys are thinking, what you want to see. Okay, this is our last one. Then we'll build our bow, we'll add our sign. And then we'll embellish it with some fun, adorable little things. Okay. This little piece is in the way. Open this up, flip this around, and then set this aside. So here's our base. So let me show you with our sign. So here's how the wreath is going to look with our sign. One in. So I'm going to move this to the side. The sign is from Craft Outlet. It's a 12 inch round. And we're gonna grab all of our ribbon for our bow. I think we're gonna go, I want the cow print on the front. So I'm looking at the colors. I'm thinking it's gonna go something like this. 
yeah so there's my color combo for my bow so I'm gonna move these ones to the side we're gonna grab our bow dabra I'm gonna push our sign back so this is the bow recipe that I'm gonna show you so it features two two and a half and four inch and a half you're gonna start with a dovetail edge which is fold your wired edges together, put them together. And then on the folded side, you're always going to cut down to the wired point. And depending upon how deep you want that V to be in your ribbon determines where you're going to start your cut on the fold to give you a nice little dovetail. That one's pretty shallow. You guys know me, I like them a little bit deeper. So I'm just going to go in and make that a little bit more defined. And we are going to measure out 10 inches and we're going to gather and we're going to twist. So we're starting with the right side of the fabric and then we're on the wrong side here. We're going to flip that up and over. We're going to twist, place that back inside our bodabra, line this up on the 10 inch line. And then as we stretch this out, we want to see it at five and a half inches, which is right about there. We're going to do the same on the other side. Same thing. Measure. That came up way short. That was like five and a quarter. And then we're back out. Ten inches. We're going to trim that up, dovetail the ends, and that first ribbon is done. Okay, that is done. Let's do our farmhouse print. Oh, you're so welcome, Anna. She said such great ideas. Love the sign also. I love the sign too. It was funny. I thought I had one. So I literally went through every single bin in my shop. Because I was like, I know I have one somewhere. For the life of me, I can't find it. And I know what's going to end up happening. Because I will find it. That it will be someplace that it's not supposed to be. So this one, our tail is nine and a half inches. And we're going to go for a five inch loop. So you usually just kind of gauge roughly what that looks like. Line it up. Take your measurement. And I was way off. And then we're going to do it on the other side. Place that in. Measure. Check. And then back at nine and a half. Do your dovetail edge. And that one's done. I hate these really super long pins, so I have discovered that if you take them and you cut them at an angle, it leaves it with a sharp point, and then you have a much, much smaller pin to push in, so I don't bend my pins as they're going into the ribbon. And now we're going with ticking. Yes. This is from Craft Outlet. Cut that little wired tip. This one is going to be nine inches with a four and a half inch loop. I love being out here in the rain because I love listening to it. It's a nice little hum. My husband adores it. He's like, oh, I wish it sounded like this inside. I'm like, if you're a little loud for trying to watch TV. So four and a half inches for our loops. And then back out to nine. Dub till the end. These scissors, if you like the red handled scissors, you can get those at kringledesigns.us. 
I will put him in my description box once this goes to replay because I can't do it right now. But if you just go Kringle, K-R-I-N-G-L-E, designs.us, you will be able to find their website. And you can just search by it for scissors. And you'll find the red handle scissors. I think they're like $13.50. And so far I've used these. So I think this is going on seven months, maybe longer. So we're going eight and a half inches, twisting. We're adding our solid black. Because sometimes solids just really tie the entire theme together. So because I've already measured the red and white ticking, I can just put my fingers in the top of that ribbon and pull and make sure they're both the same size. Do it for the other side. Just gauge, pull, bring it back to check your tail length. And we are at eight and a half inches. Dovetail that one. This is my 50 yard spool. So I usually get 50 yard spools in all of the solid colors they make. Cause it's so much easier to have one roll than five little rolls. And the pricing is better. Our Swiss dot is gonna be eight inch tails with a four inch loop. So eight inch tail twist, place inside. We're going four inch loop. It's a little shorter than our black. We will still take it and measure it a little bit more. There we go. Woo! This was me splicing a ribbon, adding an extra piece on probably a roll that didn't it was too, not full enough to put another, like to put that back on the rack. So we're at eight. Let's do that again. Go with four inches. Four inches. And then back out to eight. Dovetail our end. I'm going to make sure that has a really nice, good fold in it. And then this one we will add in just because sometimes it may be enough to make a tail or something. So I usually don't throw those away. But what I have been doing is putting a little note on it that says, um, add, so I just know that it has an additional cut piece in there. So when I go to grab it, I don't just automatically feel that mm, this feels like there's going to be enough to do a bow and then there isn't. So cowhide again from Craft Outlet. We're doing seven and a half inch tail and a three and a half inch loop to finish this bow out. I still don't know where. I'm like looking at the sign going, where should I put the bow? Where should I put the bow? Where do you guys think I should put the bow at? Because that determines how we fluff it. And we'll go back out seven and a half. Do our last dovetail. Lay that right inside. So I'm always trying to make sure I get my little ends in there correct. I haven't decided. Hi, Caitlin. She's like, hello. That is my oldest daughter. I'm going to go ahead and trim that pin down again. 
that's just way too big. I end up bending them. Um, we will do black for this one. So I'm going to get my pipe cleaner all prefabbed. I'm going to pick up this entire section of ribbon, transfer that to one hand, drop my pipe cleaner down to the bottom, hold the bottom, and just twist. So if you have issues with hand strength, this really helps. Okay, now we are going to fluff. So. going to move. So this is a 24 inch by 24 inch piece of pre-cut lumber that I got from, I want to say Home Depot, but you can get them at Lowe's and everywhere else that they have pre-cut pieces. Um, and I just put peel and stick uh, floor tile, wood grain floor tile to the top. And literally, I kid you not, it really is. Uh, just a piece of pre-cut lumber and it makes you a gorgeous way to display your bows should you sell your bows to take a gorgeous photo um, i'm just going to take this inch and a half c hook i'm going to loop it right here underneath my pipe cleaner so i'm just going to slide it so that it keeps my ribbons from moving completely off the board <sighs> oh lordy so I'm like thinking, we could do it at the bottom. That would be bottom. We could. I'm like looking. We are so challenged with this one because we have the lettering that goes all the way to the end of our sign. We have it, the lettering all the way at the bottom. We have it at the top. We might be able to frame that on the top. I'm thinking the top, which still means that we need to fluff it as if we're going to put it on the side. So we're going to separate the loops from the tails. So we're starting with the red and then we're going to the bottom and we're going to go opposite. So our loops went to the right and the tails went to the left. Here we're making our loop go to the left and our tail go to the right. This way they're completely opposite of each other. And so the next one we're going to bring down, the loop's going to go to the left, tail to the right. Here we're going to do <clears throat> tail to the left and the loop to the right. And what this has done is it's staggered our colors from loops and tails. And then we're going to mix these up. Because if we don't, the reds are always going to stay on top of the reds and the blacks will stay on top of the blacks. So you can make that executive design change just whatever you do on the top. You do the opposite to it at the bottom so that those match. So we're going to bring the blacks. We put red there. So we're doing black on top. It's actually on top of the red. The tail's just in the wrong spot. Separate it opposite here, and then we want to put the red now on top of the black, so we've got a good mix. We're going to do the same on the other side, and then we're going to take that cow print and we're going to follow the red. So, this way, if you've noticed, if I pull the tails to the side, we've kind of alternated the colors as they go down. We have black, red, black red, black, red, um, and that's the way that I want them to be. So we're going to start fluffing by lifting up the top two tails or the top two loops on both sides. Don't worry about your tails, just focus on the loops for now. And then you're looking at this going, okay, from looking down like we are right now, do we want to have the ticking in between these two? Or do we want the ticking out to the side and maybe we want the black in the center? I'm thinking I want the ticking inside. So I'm just going to fluff those two. Putting the ticking in between those. 
and the black will go to the outside. Okay, and then we're going to put the black in between these two, just like so. And we're going to put the red on the other side. So again, don't worry about the tails, just move them out of the way. But put your hands in those and really give them a good fluffing. We don't want any flat bows. And then just rearrange your loops so they lay where you want them to lay. And now we can deal with the tails, which is just run them through your fingers and you will put that nice little curve back in them all the way down. You won't see it as much on the bottom because it's flat on the board. Just like so. And then you just look at which ones you want to see where. And this is where you would take your bow photo. Like if you were selling this, it's on a really nice backdrop. It's a very neutral backdrop. It allows you to see everything on the actual board itself. And what this yields is an 11 inch bow measuring from the loops out. So the longest loop is eight inches, or sorry, 11 inches in diameter. If you wanna trim up your tails so your tails are even with the bow, you can definitely do that. We're just gonna take this off. We will prep our sign. So let's prep the sign. So it already comes with a hole in the top and the bottom. I'm just going to use floral wire. This is 22 gauge floral wire. Uh, this is probably about 14 inches. Give or take a little bit. Uh, 16 inches. So what I'm going to do is place this in that hole going to make sure that we have even ends and then I'm going to start twisting right over the hole. So literally right over the top of that hole is where I'm doing my twisting. And then it builds up a nice little base on the back side. We'll spin this around, do it again wire through the top, make sure your ends are even, and then right over the hole, we're gonna start our twist. What this does is it creates a solid back for your sign, and if you did them from the outside, like if we had our wire here, it's more of a spinner, so your sign isn't gonna lay 100% flat on your design. So when we go to add this, to our wreath base, we don't have to worry about the wire showing because it's on the back of the ribbon. We said we're gonna do our bow at the top. So I wanna make sure that I'm bringing that down. So I am going to look, here's one of our inside um, pipe cleaners. So I'm gonna lay my bottom right in over this. So I always want to make sure that I have one wire on the top of the rail and one wire to the bottom. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to push this down to make sure I have like these. I did. I like actually went around two rails instead of one. So bringing it down, pushing it down, that's roughly where I want it to stop. You do not want to take it all the way to the frame. If you do, it'll look like your sign is sinking, which we don't want. And then we're going to take this, and because we're putting our bow at the top, I'm going to make sure that my mesh is laying flat. And I'm going to go ahead and Trying to add this through those layers. And 
I'm actually working right on top of a pipe cleaner, which is why it wasn't working. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta re-maneuver your wire. Okay and make sure that you're not bending it as you're pushing it down. Okay. So, pull it down, anchor it where you want it to be, and then we're gonna remove our tails to the outside. And then right around here from about the this section of the wreath down, we're gonna go ahead and pull some of this mesh out to kind of feather that really harsh edge. So we're just gonna grab some of our internal pieces, moving the ribbon out of the way, pulling that over, doing the same thing here, just pulling that mesh back out going around. It's all right there, so we're just bringing it back up to the front. Nice and pretty like that. Okay, from here though, we have our bow. So until we get the bow on, I'm not going to worry about our deco mesh up here, because if I try to place this here, this deco mesh is so stiff, it's actually going to elevate my bow, and it's going to be really difficult for me to get it in the position I want. So let me find my pipe cleaner. And because I know where my ribbon tails are, I wanna make sure we can still see the fresh, but I want my ribbon tails to kind of cascade down over the sign. But I still need to make sure I'm hitting the frame too. So let me get this positioned in. I'm going to push this down to where it's sitting level with my sign. Give it a couple of twists. And then we're going to readjust our ribbons at the top. So we get it to frame and not flop over the sides. So I want to bring all my tails. Let's get this one back where it needs to be. Kind of want these ones to be a little bit more elevated, but to the side. Okay, let me look. looking. Mm, mm, mm. It's always hard to see it when it's laying flat versus when it's up on the door. If I really want it hmm like there's so much writing at the top that I'm like I'm really pushing my bow off to the edge of the wreath to get it to really go. Like once I get it on the door, I can rearrange it a little bit differently since I'm not looking at it from a three-dimensional perspective. So let's go ahead and finish the embellishment and then we'll readjust that if we need to on the door so that it lays better. Okay, so remember how we had all those open spaces for our, um, on our red ribbon? We're going to add some cowbells, some. Um, so I found these on Amazon. So they're little cowbell embellishments with the little handle. And yes, they do sound like a cowbell. So I'm adding these 
two. Let's see if we can get them in the position I want them. Let me see. I think that'll work. So there's our little cowbell. So I'm just twisting those on. That way if the client doesn't want them on, they can take it off. So we're gonna add a couple more. I think you can buy them in a set of 12. These are three inch cowbells. So they come like this. All pre-done for you. So I'm just placing those right in where our pipe cleaners are. And just twisting them on. Again, tucking those below. There's that one. Right up, twist, and there's that one, because I felt like we had to put those on the red because they're black cowbells. So if we put them on the black, you would totally lose them. Let's go right around. If you're interested in purchasing this wreath, it is available on my website at the link that's pinned below. I'm only going to make one, so I have one more. Set the rest aside, so we have enough to make another one. Again, right into our pipe cleaner. Okay, and then on the other spots where our black and whites are, and like I said, you can determine what you want to see more predominant. If you want more red, pull your red ribbon up and over. If you want the black to be more predominant, then pull that over your um, ribbon so that you decide what you want to see where. So I'm going to pull the black over. It just makes it easier for me when we add our next embellishment. So I'm going to go here. With that, you can still see the red. Back over our black. We've added the black. And I think the black is there. Okay, so Back in the days when people used to get milk delivered, they used to come in glass bottoms with wax tops. So these are legitimate milk tops that went on the back of a bottle. You could, if you still had, oh, I do look, I'll show you. Let me take these out. These, I use a glass bottle just to hold all my extra stems. So this is the way they used to, you know, deliver your milk and you would just place that right on the top of your glass bottle. So this is like a dairy milk bottle. So that's what we are going to add on our black and white spaces to get all my picks back in there. So we are going to attach these where it says 
real dairy products, homogenized vitamin D milk, and it's got all the little ingredient things on it. We're just going to add glue to the back and we're going to lay these right on top of our cow print ribbon. Okay. And I believe you can buy the milk caps. Ugh, I've had these for six years. Um, you can, I, where I bought them was on um, Etsy. There was an Etsy seller who was selling them. So I just was like, okay, what makes a, a cow wreath unique? Cowbells and the milk top, since this is clearly a farm fresh milk wreath and we'll put one of these in the center of our bow as well so right on the underside just under our loop is where we're adding those got another one here so we're gonna move my ribbon out of the way because I have the red ribbon right here by the bow. Scooch it on over, making sure that the label is facing up so you can actually read that right there, right underneath. And I believe I have one. Yes, way up underneath there. I'm gonna be super careful. I don't flop my fingers in there. And then we'll set one right on the inside of our wreath bow. And then I think we're done. So it's kind of nice because there's a little wax seal in that. But what do you guys think? That is our Farm Fresh milk wreath. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the door so you guys can see. I'm gonna go ahead and pivot you up. And right about there. Okay, take this one down and we'll put our cow milk wreath up on top. That'll be interesting whenever um, somebody comes to your door. If they knock, you'll hear the cowbells. If you don't like the cowbells, you can take the cowbells off. It is entirely up to you. But, oh, and there, need to re-glue. It's hadn't given it enough time to dry inside our bow. That's what happens with gravity. Is um doesn't want to stay. Doesn't want to stay until it dries. But I'm gonna try to manipulate my bow be so much easier if you just dried. Trying to get this centered on my hook, on my door. There we go. Okay. What do you guys think? I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. Boop. Let me zoom in. I think that showcases I was trying to like figure out how do I get out of the view of the camera. Um, so there is our farm fresh milk cow wreath. This is available for sale on the website pinned below. If you guys have any questions that I can answer, uh, please feel free. Cheryl says adorable. I love it. Pam says it's beautiful. Elizabeth says great. It's just a totally different design 
for a cow-themed wreath. All right, everyone. Well, I've got all new designs planned for you for next week, so I can't wait for you to join me. Don't forget, I am here every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, and on Thursday, it's 11 Pacific, 1 Central, and 2 p.m. Eastern. So I hope you guys love it and be prepared for more designs next week. Have an amazing weekend, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.